around my story. Hello, my name is Adrian and I am 27 years old. I'm an archaeologist and the leader of an archaeological team. We have recorded many archaeological discoveries and earned many honors in our country. We are renowned and popular with the media. Yet, in spite of all my achievements, I wasn't satisfied. My dream in life was to discover the hidden gold of King Pedro, the second king of Peru. He was reputed in many legends to have possessed a vast treasure of gold. However, there was no concrete evidence of this. For all I knew, it may have been just old wives' tales passed down through the generations. I was the only one I knew who took the legend seriously. King Pedro had been famous for his power and strength. The stories mentioned that he had many hidden underground treasures, so there was at least a chance that these stories and legends might be true. I started my journey by searching the internet for maps and data from any previous expeditions to Peru. I read their notes, logs, and experiences there. I found a lot of data but no solid information that I could hang my hat on. I didn't give up though. I invited a few trusted members of my team to accompany me on an expedition to Peru. A four-day trip saw us arrive at the South American Forest, a heavily forested place, an ideal place for a king to hide his treasure. The forest was full of wild animals, and we were attacked several times. Every night, we would have insect bites all over our bodies. Still, I didn't lose hope in spite of these adversities. All evidence pointed to a place called the Tiger's Eye, somewhere in the middle of the forest. It was believed to be a lava tube or cave of some sort, with a lava flow that went deep into the earth. When we reached what we believed to be our destination, we were so tired. Yet, my enthusiasm and face drove me to want to go down into the hole immediately. My team warned me to exercise caution, but I was too excited too close to potentially achieving my life stream. I rigged a rope and began lowering myself down into the hole. I quickly learned that this had been a mistake. The air in the hole was scalding hot. Sparks were rising with the hot air flow up and out of the hole. The rope started smoldering where small sparks in the stifling air uptake had clung to the rope, creating small burning embers. I began to worry that my rope might burn through and drop me into this hellhole. But right before I started to pull myself back up, I glimpsed something. Something shiny. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw flashes of gold tint embedded in the rock and glinting in the faint sunlight glow from above. I climbed out of the hole, soaking in sweat, sucking in the cool, refreshing air to expel the burning air from my lungs. I told my team about the veins of gold in the walls of the hole. We set up a camp for a few weeks and were able to extract a small fortune's worth of gold. It wasn't King Pedro's gold treasure, but it was close enough to make our expedition worthwhile. It was a great discovery in that my trip wasn't completely in vain. Can I call my dream a success? Hello, my name is Benjamin and I'm 17 years old. I am sitting in a court waiting to hear my sentence, my punishment. When you listen to my story, you may pity me. My story started three years ago when my parents died in a train crash. My father was a businessman, and my mother was just a housewife. The news of their death was a big shock to me because I couldn't imagine my life without them. I was forced to move in with my grandparents. The hardest period of my life was about to start. My relationship with them wasn't that close. They lived in a city far away from my home, so I visited them in the past only a few days every year. When I heard my friends talking about the generosity of their grandparents, I wondered why, because mine never gave me any presents or showed me any kindness at all. My grandparents lived austere lives, so living with them was hard for me. They were stingy and cheap. Despite living in a villa, we all ate plain meals that barely supplied me adequate nourishment. In addition, we only ate one meal a day. I was always hungry. My room was infested with insects. The furniture was worn and torn. They paid the servant a minimal wage, so her work was minimal as well. I would always sneak into the kitchen to steal anything I could find in the fridge to eat. When I asked my grandparents why they were living so minimally, 
They said it was because they were saving money for the future, when they eventually figured out that I was stealing food from the refrigerator, they locked it closed at night. Do you believe that? One day, when I entered the study to speak with Grandpa, his safe was open and I glimpsed gold bars, a hefty pile of cash, and a mound of jewelry. When he saw me enter, he slammed the safe closed and gave me a cold look. At midnight, I happened to go to the bathroom and while returning to my bedroom, I overheard Grandpa say, Eat fast before he wakes up. I looked through a slot in the door to see them eating delicious food. Grandma said, I don't know why you insisted on letting him move in with us. He replied, Well, I couldn't let people see me abandon an orphaned grandson. She said, I wish I could wake up one day and find him gone. Her words were like a knife through my heart. I decided then and there that they deserved to die. I wished that they had died instead of my parents. I waited until they went to sleep. Then I entered their room, took the key from their bedside, went to the safe, and stole all their money, gold and jewelry, and put it in my backpack. Then I loosened a heating gas fitting in their bedroom, allowing it to leak into their room. Then I exited, closed the door, and sealed the bottom of the door with a towel. The next morning I took a bus to another town, intending to take the train to get even further away. In the meantime, the police discovered the death of my grandparents. They also discovered that there were security cameras around their villa that had recorded everything I did. As I sat there in the train station, I saw this news on a TV in the waiting area. They were showing my face from earlier news stories when my parents had died in the train crash. Everyone around me was looking at me. It seemed I was a dead ringer for the murder suspect. I was arrested, taken to court, tried, and found guilty on two counts of cold-blooded murder. So here I sit, waiting to hear my sentence. I am ready for any punishment. I feel no remorse. Given another chance, I would do it again. My name is Ricardo. Though I am a 21-year-old, my body is the size of a 10-year-old boy because I was born with a disease called Prader-Willi Syndrome, PWS, which stunted my body growth while allowing my mind to continue developing. Most people would consider PWS to be a curse, but it was a gift for Dad and me because we took advantage of this situation. My story starts when Dad's company accused him of embezzlement and fired him. The scandal and shame of this incident kept him from getting any other type of work, so we left our country to start a new life elsewhere. Dad was still unable to get a job because his old company always gave him bad references when called by prospective new employers. Dad was worried about our future, so he improvised and came up with a scheme to turn me into the goose that laid the golden egg. You see, children always bullied me due to my small body size. Luckily, my mature mind helped me avoid fights most of the time. One day, Dad asked me if I wanted to become famous, and I said, sure. He told me that we needed a way to gain people's sympathy, and he explained his plan. We went to the garage and found some old torn clothes that he asked me to wear. Then he poured dirty water on me. Then he made a recording of me crying and explaining that I had been beaten by some bullies in our neighborhood. After we finished making our sympathy garnering video, he applauded my performance and posted it to the internet to see what reaction we would get. The next day, our video went viral and I became an instant celebrity. All the news agencies gave the video broad coverage and I began receiving sympathetic phone calls and donations from around the world. Several international schools offered me free scholarships at their schools and I managed to amass a good size of money from all the donations and for a moment, I thought our days of poverty were finally over. Unfortunately, the authorities investigated my background and found that I was 21 years old and not really a kid at all. Then, all my fortunes reversed themselves, and the police came after me for fraud. I am speaking to you now from a hotel room as I hide from the police. I have enough money to head to another country, preferably one that has no extradition treaty with my country. I have enough money to live comfortably without needing to work for the rest of my life. So, on balance, I don't have any regrets about what I've done.